So in this video, this is going to be a video that's one of the most important business videos that you're going to learn in this course. And that is the power of systems. Now systems are the thing that allows you to put your business on idle. This is the stuff we talk about when you're talking about your business just running without you being there, you're on the beach somewhere and everything just works. This is what we're talking about when we're saying money's just coming in while you sleep. It just runs, it's like a machine. Even if you, I don't know, got sick for weeks, your business would still be running. It is the thing that puts your business on autopilot. We're talking about systems. Now, one of the things that was powerful that I learned about systems, one of the greatest examples come from one of my favorite books of all time, which is The Eight Pillars of Prosperity. Now in this book, he said what was powerful about systems, he had a friend that he could leave his business for an entire year and not one thing would be out of place, all the way down to the boy who was sweeping up in front of the shop. Now that's crazy to think about, that you have something that runs so effectively that after leaving for a year, everything still runs the same. Another great example they said is, and I want you to think about this, because I thought it was a beautiful example, so I'll share it here. They said, all the miracles of language, so every piece of poetry, every, every piece of music, everything you've ever listened to, every movie script, everything that's been ever created, is based on a system that just has 26 letters, the alphabet, which is arranged by a couple of rules, which is a system. Think about everything. Even me talking right now, you understand this because of a system of just 26 letters. That's crazy to think about all that's possible just from that small system if you have a strong system. Because a lot of times people think systems are limiting. If I have a process, it's limiting. But think about what can be done if you have an effective system. And we're going to talk about how to create that here. So, okay, so let's get right down into it. I got a couple of notes here for you. Okay, all right, so let's talk about the organizational model, right? So the organizational model is broken down to a couple of parts. At the smallest part of an organizational model, we have the business process. Above that, we have the business system. Now, the business system is just a collection of business processes. And above all that, all the systems make up your organizational model. And I'll put up a picture right here, as you can see on the screen right here, that um, that's what an organizational model looks like. Now, don't get intimidated by, th by this because even the largest systems that you see in the world started very small. So before we get into understanding this, I want to introduce something called Gaul's Law. So what Gaul's Law basically states that every complex system that works is comprised of smaller systems that work. And as you understand how systems work, this will make a lot more sense to you. But the most complex system, whether it's Amazon, whether it's Google, whether it's Apple, it just started with a couple simple systems and they built up more sophisticated as time went on. And now there are these mega corporations that have thousands of systems within them and processes, but you're going to start from where you're at and then eventually you can build up to that level if you choose to. So let's first start with the business process. Now a business process is the activities that a business does to accomplish a task. So this is basically literally or the step-by-step -step process of each thing that you do in your business. So what might a business process look like? Let's say you have a restaurant and we'll use a restaurant as an example. Let's say you have a restaurant. Well when you open up the store, all the steps you would take to open up the store, that is a business process. Right? And we'll go through this and map this out really quickly in this video so you understand it. So all the things we're talking about here would be a business process. Well above that, let's say you have the process where the manager walks in and they have a step-by-step -step process to opening the door. And then also when the chefs and the cooks come in, they have a process for prepping the food and getting ready, that's step-by-step. -step. All those together would form the store opening system. Now, while that store opening system has all those processes in it, there's other aspects of the business, right? So you have maybe the financial aspects. So the way the accountants file reports to give to you as the CEO or the president of the, of the company, those would be the financial systems. And all those systems put together would create your organizational model. So you can see how it comes from very simple, which is the step-by-step -step processes that make things happen. Then you have the system that all those things are contained in, and then you have the organizational model which contains all your systems. So what I wanna do really quickly here is 
Just map out a simple business process, and then you'll understand how you would map out multiple business processes to make sure that it's a system. So I've got something already prepared here, so we could go through this really quickly as an example. So it's gonna pop up on the screen for you, so you can see it. All right. So under the business process, remember I said the business process is just basically activities that you do in order to get something accomplished in the business. So going back to our opening up the store example, let's look at how a business system might look. Okay, so on the screen right here, you can see that this is a basic system. And we'll go by this step by step so you understand. So this is what you would give to your manager or an employee who's opening up the door or opening up for the restaurant that day. Why is this good? Because we'll talk about in a second the scaling principle and why this is so powerful. Because once you can do this, you can have anybody do this and it becomes interchangeable. Okay, so first what you would want them to do is come in and unlock the door, right? That's the first thing to do when they get there. They've got the key, they have to unlock the door. The next thing, they would turn off the alarm. So a lot of restaurants, or most restaurants, or really any restaurant should have an alarm. So if somebody breaks in, they have an alarm. So the first thing they would need to do is turn off the alarm. Now this may seem so obvious and so simple, but you'd be surprised at how many people might miss this simple step. So it's important to document everything. Okay, the next thing, turn on the lights, right? Now, I'm going through this so, so specific because I want you to understand the level of detail you can put inside these business processes because this is gonna be important to making your business run on autopilot. Open the lockers. So let's say there's lockers in the back where people can put their stuff during the day. Maybe the chefs, maybe the wait staff, they have a place to put their stuff because they're gonna be in uniform. They want, maybe you wanna have their cell phones on the floor and stuff like that. So you wanna unlock the lockers. So this is the manager's job, right? Next, start the employee time card system. Maybe they have some type of system that tracks the employees before they come in, so they need to have that active so when the employees get there, they can clock in. Go over the morning inventory. So this is when they would break out the inventory, and maybe they had some inventory from the night before, they would go over the morning inventory the next morning to make sure that everything's in place so they can get ready for business that day. Sign the morning inventory, which means that as the manager, they've done the morning inventory and they're signing off that the morning inventory was correct. Log the inventory, which is they go put it wherever in the business is supposed to have a log of the inventory so they can keep track of it over the day. Next, conduct the morning staff meeting. So all the staff's here now, they conduct the morning staff meeting, and now that they've conducted this meeting, the last thing, they open the store for the day. Now you can see this is very simple process but this is a, the lowest level of business process. And like I said, that's the manager's job to open up the store. But maybe they have a, a store closing process and also the chefs have a process for how they work. All those different processes mapped out like that would become your store opening system, right? Now, what is the power of this? The power of this is the scaling principle. Once you have a great store operation system, which, is a comprom which comprises of opening store systems and closing store systems and how you do policies and procedures for that store, you can take that system and then duplicate it, duplicate it by opening up another store. And once you get that running with all the systems in place, you can duplicate that by opening up another store. But guess what? You don't have to be at all those stores because you mapped out the system and process to make sure that it's powerful and that it works no matter who's using it. Now, of course, you have managerial positions and stuff like that that requires managing people. And we've talked about that in this course about managing teams. But the purpose of having the system is you have a place to build upon so you can put it on autopilot. These large corporations, let's say you go to a franchise like a McDonald's or something, right? There's a system in place that allows them to have thousands of locations that operate similar because they have a system in place. So the same thing with you and your business. You may find that a lot of times you're like, oh my God, I can't find somebody. If I just had another me, I could easily be successful. Well, this is how you create another you. You take the business processes that you do, break them down step by step, turn them into a business process, and those multiple processes into a system. Remember that's what I told you about having systems. If you have a system in place, there's all kinds of things that should be able to take place if you're gone. So this is how we remove ourselves from the parts of the business that are not important, I don't want to say not important, but the parts of the business that are less important or less priority and start focusing on the bigger stuff. Look, as the CEO of the company, maybe your job is to go out there and acquire a new business, get investors, go out there, speak to the people, grow the brand, whatever it is, right? But if you're focused on the mundane stuff like opening up your store, is that really the best use of your time? Well, you could bring somebody in with a great system and things work. 
So here we have multiple systems. We have systems for how we do our marketing. We have systems for how we do our human resources and bring people in. We have all these different systems. So if you ever say, for example, work for us, there'd be a system, there'd be a process of how you're brought in, how we bring in a new employee, how we give them the handbook, how we take them through orientation. All this stuff is documented so it happens the same way every single time. And all those systems come together to create our human resource system, which is comprised of many processes of how you bring in a new employee. Is it starting to make sense? Well, this is the same thing you want to do for every aspect of your business. Because once you can do this, I can manage multiple people in teams very easily because now they're all operating off a system. Okay, with that being said, there's a couple key tips I want to give you about systems here um, to make it a lot more easy and a lot more tangible for you. Um, we're going to talk about mapping your four to nine core processes and systems in another video. But we've talked about how systems can multiply. We've talked about all these things. But I also want to, to understand about how to simplify these systems. So the temptation to do when you're making a system is do what I did in the beginning, is make something that looks like this. Yes, I know this looks crazy on the screen. And this is basically what we would call an overcomplicated process. What we want to do to make a good process is keep it between seven and 12 steps. If you're going above seven and 12 steps for a process, that means you need to break it down to another process. The same thing with systems. When you have multiple systems, you could have a system within a system, right? So basically, you could have the human resources system, and then you could have the hiring system, right? Which has multiple processes in it. Is this starting to make sense? This is how you can have systems and subsystems and then processes. Now, I know this is a lot to take in, but this is why I want you to watch this video over and over again, because once you understand this process, once you understand this structure right here, this organizational model, you can literally organize anything. This is really the secret sauce to making these big companies run. A good friend of mine, DJ, and you know him as Country Cowboy, he said that when you have good systems, you take them for granted. I mean, think about this. Like when you go to Walmart or something like this, you don't even think that that person there greeting you when, when you walk into Walmart is a system. A system somebody put up a long time ago by Sam Walton, he talked about having somebody greet them when you walk in. The way the cash registers work, the way they hire employees. This is so powerful that he doesn't even have to be alive right now. His system is still perpetuating. We talk about building long lasting things and empires. This is what we're talking about. We're using systems to multipl multiply the processes and tasks that we do every day in order to make sure that not only is it consistent, but somebody else can do it if we're not there. So this is some of the power of systems. And why I really want to emphasize this part of, of, the, of the course is because a lot of times when I look at businesses, one of the big problems is not that they don't have the talent, they don't have the skill. Not that they're not a good company or they don't have a good message or a good vision. It's because they lack organization because they just don't understand how to be organized. Yes, you need your policies and procedures. Yes, you need to know how to tell your employees how they should show up to work. Yes, you should have all this stuff in place. But more importantly, when everybody comes, everybody needs to know what job they're doing. As we go through the part where we're talking about your 49 core process, what I want you to keep in mind is that when you put these systems in place, this is what's going to push you from being an amateur company to a big time company. This is the thing that's going to allow you to make big time corporations that span not just your local city, but across the world because you know how to create systems that can multiply your efforts and have thousands, tens of thousands even eventually, running a system that you created that was so simple. Remember what I said, even Google, Amazon started as very simple, simple systems. But as they expanded, they start adding more and more to the point they get to where they're at right now where they understand everything from how to deliver a, a product, do Amazon Prime fulfillment, and even places like Coca-Cola have mapped from the time they mine the stuff they need to create a can of Coca-Cola all the way to how it gets to the store shelf, store shelf, all the systems and processes that are necessary to make that happen. This is the type of level of sophistication you want to take your business. And I promise if you do this, if you do this thing, right, what I'm telling you right now, and create systems, take the time to map your processes, you'll see that it'll get a lot easier because you're going to just be able to bring people in to help you do the things you need to do. I'll see you next one.